amazing. Because my first scripture is actually James 2.19, Aubrey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I am, uh, this is one of the, the, the kind of messages that I'm just really excited about because it's, it's, like, it's going to be life changing. Uh, I just speak light bulb moments over everybody in the name of Jesus. See that. Light, light bulb bulbs going off yeah. all through this message yeah. and Amen. just igniting fires and oh, excitement. Yes, the glory of God coming in this earth. You are the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hey. You are the glory of God. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, uh, you know, Pastor Larry is uh, got his ox in the ditch this morning. He had to go to New Orleans, and uh, so he he uh, said, you know, I was going to preach, and I love to I love to get up here and work with God. Amen. <laughs> I love it. Yes. And uh, as I I said, we you know we had a really good discussion Friday night, and. Uh, then the Lord gave me this word uh, Friday night. Uh, and he said, let's clear up the confusion about what faith really is. That's the title of the, his, his message this morning for the church. He wants the confusion gone. We're going to get rid of all the stinking thinking, the wrong doctrine. We're going to attack with the sword of the Word of God, yes. the stinking thinking, the lies about our Father God. Right. Amen. We are going to make clear what His will is for yes. you yes. and for the earth. Amen. 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 One of the things we're going to dispel is you can't know the will of God. That's a lie. Lie. That's a lie. Yes. Amen. You can know the will of God. This Bible that He gave us is His will. Yes. Hallelujah. He tells you everything you need to know. He tells you exactly how to behave in this earth. Amen. If you'll believe it and if you'll do it. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, let's go to James chapter 2. And we're just going to hone in on verse 19. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you that faith, as folks, as most folks use it, I'm not going to lump everybody in this group, but as most folks use the word faith, they think uh, of a religion. Okay? Faith is not a religion. Right. No. Faith... Good morning. Y'all come on in. Faith is not a religion. Faith is more than just a belief in God. Okay? Faith is way more than that. And James 2, verse 19, let's read it and we'll see what, what it said, what the word says about it. I thought I was there, but I'm not. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading out of the Passion. <clears throat> you can believe all you want that there is one true God. That's wonderful. But even the demons know this and tremble with fear before Him. Yet they're unchanged. They remain demons. Mm -hmm. See, just a belief that God is real, that uh, you have faith, the faith, you believe that there is a God, but you remain unchanged, that's not real faith. That's right. Because right. as Brother Aubrey brought out, faith is action. Yes. Faith changes you. Amen. Faith changes the situation. Right. Amen? Amen? Without any change, that's not faith. If you remain unchanged, that's not faith. Right. Like I said, you believe in God, hey, wonderful. 
But if you remain the same, it's not doing any good. That's not faith. Wow. Amen. Okay? What we're talking about, we're clearing up the confusion. Because there's confusion about what real faith is. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you know what real faith is, it's going to change your life. Yeah. Amen. There won't be a bad day. Hey. Hey. <laughs> There won't be any problems that your faith cannot overcome. Amen. If you understand what real faith is. So let's look at Hebrews 11. We all know that uh, Hebrews 11 is called the faith chapter. Uh, in the, uh, the Passion, it says the power of bold faith. I love that. Wow. I'm telling y'all there's power in bold faith. And the only kind of faith that they're really a real faith is God's faith. And it's bold. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, it takes boldness to declare centuries before it actually happens that, hey, a virgin is going to give birth. Yeah. yeah. Amen. What? You've got people in the earth even today think that's, that's, that's just not what it means. Yeah. They twist it and they try to make... Make it uh, something that it's not. They try to lie. Because they, they, they're mine. See, it takes faith. It takes a bold faith to make that statement. It takes a bold faith to believe that statement. Yep. Amen? Amen. Wow. So, Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith brings our hopes into reality. Faith brings our hopes into reality. Faith becomes the foundation. Faith becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. Faith is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Huh. This is faith. We're talking about what real faith is. Notice, faith is not hope. That's right. Right. Too many times people confuse it. I hope so. Yeah, they confuse hope and faith. And they get disappointed. And they get confused. Yeah. Look, faith brings our hopes. There is something called hope. And you have to have hope. But it's not real faith. Faith is what brings out our hopes into reality. It becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Verse uh, 2 says, This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. I'm telling you, folks, God, when he sees real faith, he rewards it. He, he's looking for it. Mm -hmm. He's looking for real faith. Verse 3, faith empowers us to see. Faith has eyes. Faith has eyes. It empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's what? Words. words. This is key. He spoke, and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Wow. Hallelujah. Okay? We're building on this. We're talking about what real faith is. It's not hope, but it brings that hope. Out of the unseen realm, you have hopes, you have dreams. Mm -hmm. Nobody can see them. They're in the unseen realm. But before you put your faith and you draw that out mm -hmm. into the seen world, that's what God did when he spoke, let there be light. There was no light. Genesis says the world was in darkness and void. 
But see, God saw with his eyes of faith. Amen. And he spoke and said, light be. Mm -hmm. And light was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're made in his image. Yes. Right. We act like he acts. Right. Okay? Amen. We speak like he speaks. He's given all of us a measure of faith when you enter the kingdom. So you have the faith of God. Glory to God. Amen. You have it. Hallelujah. Okay. I looked it up in the dictionary. Faith is defined as a strong belief in God. That's what the dictionary defines it. Faith Simply put, is what you believe in your heart. Not your head. Mm -hmm. Faith is what you believe in your heart. And the Bible says that out of the heart, man speaks. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's notice what faith is not. We already saw that faith is not hope, is it? No. It's not hope. See, hope lives in the soulish realm. It lives in the mind. It lives in the will. It lives in the emotions. That's the soul. The mind, the will, the emotions. And the soul, you have a soul and it lives in the body. You are a spirit. You are a spirit being. You were created in the image and form and fashion of God. God is spirit. When he breathed his spirit, breath into man, into Adam, he became a living soul. Soul with a mind, with a will, and with emotions. Right. That's where hope lives. But faith lives in the spirit. Right. Your heart. Who you are. That's where faith lives. Amen? Right. So hope operates in your head. It, it operates in your thoughts and your emotions. But hope will never bring a change. That's right. Hope's not going to bring a change. You can hope until the dogs come home. And it will never change. It won't change you, and it won't change your situation. Hope will never bring the answer. That's faith's job. Right. That's faith's job. Faith does that. Look at Hebrews verse 3 again. Faith empowers us to see. Key in on that word. See. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. Wow. See, faith, that's the eye. That's the eyes of your spirit. Yeah. Faith is what sees into the invisible realm. What's the invisible realm? That's the spirit realm. We've talked about it before. This natural world is not all there is. Right. Right. It's sad to say most folks in the earth think this is it. This world is it. And you live and you die and who knows what happens after that. Millions of people across the planet think that way. Mm -hmm. Or they're deceived and, and have twisted thoughts of, you know, uh, well, if I live a good enough life, then, you know, maybe I'll, I'll reincarnate into uh, a king. But if I live a, a pitiful, evil life, you know, I'll come back as a cockroach. You've got people think that. They believe that. It's twisted. Know nothing about the spirit world. Mm -hmm. The spirit world is where God lives. See, people don't think about it. They think God is, oh, he's in heaven. And they think heaven is just this, you know, white fluffy clouds floating by. Heaven is a real place. I believe it's a planet. Yeah. Way, way to the north. Mm -hmm. It's a real place. My son Joshua's there. Mm -hmm. My daddy's there. I got family there. Mm -hmm. Friends there. Mm -hmm. Real place. 
And Jesus came from there to bring the ways of heaven to the earth. Right. So that we wouldn't live twisted lives. That we could live victorious lives. We could live as it is in heaven, so it is in earth. Amen. Isn't that what he prayed? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what his will is? That's right. As it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's going to happen through you. You are the glory of God when you manifest his faith. Because his faith is powerful in this earth. If used correctly. Amen? Amen. Everything begins in the invisible realm. And so it takes faith that sees into the invisible realm to bring our hopes where they can be seen in this natural world. Amen? Amen. I'll say that again if, if you want to write that down. Everything begins in the invisible realm. And so it takes faith that sees in the invisible realm to bring our hopes where they can be seen in this natural realm. Amen. Okay, notice how faith works. Did y'all notice how it works? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. How does it work? You're pulling in your hopes into the natural world. How? By okay. your words. Oh, your words, yeah. By, By your words. Your faith words. God spoke. Yep. He spoke what he saw in the unseen realm and boom, it came into this natural realm. Yes. Light, sun, moon, stars, plants, animals. Let's move the seas around. Let's make mountains. All with his words. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he blessed it all. See, you have the power of the blessing in your tongue. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can bless. You speak and you bless. Him. That's how. That's what he did, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. I want to show you something here. We're talking about clearing up the confusion of what real faith is. Okay, we're going to start in verse 45. Luke 6, verse 45. Okay, Jesus is talking about fruit. Because y'all know where we're headed. Mm -hmm. We're headed to the fig tree. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're headed. Okay, so Jesus here is talking about fruit. But verse 45, people are known in this same way. Let's go ahead and read verse 43. You'll never find choice fruit hanging on a bad, unhealthy tree. Will you? No. If the tree is bad, the fruit's going to be bad. And rotten fruit doesn't hang on a good, healthy tree. Every tree will be revealed by the quality of fruit that it produces. Figs or grapes will never be picked off thorn trees. Is that a true statement? Have you ever found an apple on an orange tree? No. Have you ever found figs on a grapevine? No. No. And you've never found good fruit on a bad vine. Or bad fruit on a good vine. Did you know that y'all are the good tree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how God sees y'all. Mm -hmm. You're the good tree. Amen. So there's good fruit on you. Amen? Amen. But verse 45, people are known in this same way. Out of the virtue stored in their hearts, good and upright people will produce good fruit. But out of the evil hidden in their hearts, evil ones will produce what is evil. For the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard in your words. 
This is key. This, this is where we're going to wreck stinking thinking. You cannot believe in your heart that God has put a sickness on you. I've got cancer, or I've got Alzheimer's, or I've got paralysis because God is trying to teach me something. Amen. That is hellish. It is demonic. Amen. It's a lie. Amen. It's a lie against my father. That's right. He does not act like that. Amen. That's not who he is. Amen. He loves. Amen. He loves so much that he gave Jesus. While I was still a sinner. Amen. While I didn't give a hoot for him. Yeah. He sent Jesus and Jesus came and Jesus died for me. Hallelujah. That's love. He would not put any kind of sickness on me to teach me something. Right. Jesus laid it plain out. It's the devil. Oh! <gasps> Oh. Some people are scared of the devil and he's defeated. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus Amen. defeated him. Yep. Jesus stripped him. Yes. Picture. Yes. The way they used to do before everybody got politically correct, the way the armies used to do, they when they captured leaders, mm -hmm. if they would have captured Saddam Hussein, they'd have stripped him naked. Parading him through the streets. Mm -hmm. Made a public spectacle of him. Because why? He's defeated. They defeated him. The whole world needs to know he's not the king anymore. That's right. He's defeated. He ain't nothing. And that's what Jesus did mm -hmm. for us to our enemy and the enemy of God. Yeah, amen. Those rebel spirits that rebelled against God who wanted to take our dominion. They come into the garden and saw our dominion. They saw what we had from our God and they stole it. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came and gave it back to us at Calvary. Amen. I'm telling you that's good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Don't you tell me that my God put any kind of sickness on you. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He didn't make you get in some accident and paralyze you. So you can have a good attitude in it. Right. I'm sorry. I'm not, I am not I am not being mean. Mm -mm. But this needs to be re re removed. Mm -hmm. This kind of stinking thinking has got to be rebuked. It's from hell. Because it, it robs you of your faith. Yeah. yeah. If you believe that, if that's what's in your heart, how can you believe that you could be healed? That you could come up out of that wheelchair? That you could have a whole body free of cancer. Free, your mind would be sharp. Free of Alzheimer's. You can't have faith if that's what you put in your heart. Yeah. If you believe a lie about his character. We talked about his character last week. He would not act that way. He would not do that. I'm telling you, please believe me. He's not that way. Amen. That's just not who he is. That's not how he acts. It's the devil. It's the enemy of God. Yeah. Jesus said it's the thief. Right. Jesus calls him a thief. He's been a thief and a murderer from the beginning. He's the one that comes in. And if you don't know the truth, if, you're, if the truth of God is not in your heart, he will destroy. You. He will destroy your family. He will kill. He will steal. He'll make your life a living hell. You'll not have any peace. Oh, because you're believing a lie. Mm -hmm. Get in the Word. Amen. Find out what God's will is. And believe it. Store it in your heart. Amen. Store it in your heart. And when trouble comes, it comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It just automatically comes out. I've told y'all before. I was sitting on my toilet one night about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Had to get up and go pee. Felt horrible. I mean, bad. And I was sitting there, oh man. And I heard him whisper, I'm going to kill you. That was the, that was the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you. And immediately what come out of my heart and out of my mouth, you don't even know where I live. My life is hid in Christ and you can't touch me. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. He left. Mm -hmm. Why? I'm not building myself up. I'm telling you. This works if you'll do it. Yeah. Amen. I'm just an ordinary. I, I, I'm less than ordinary without Christ. Yeah. But Christ in me has given me the victory. Hallelujah. He has given me power and authority over the enemies. Of God. Amen. And I walk in it. Come on. Because I'm not going to shame him by knowing the truth and not doing it. Amen. The price he paid to give me this, and I'm going to poo-poo it away? I don't think so. I don't think so. See, it's the overflow of your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. What's in you? Is it the truth? Is it faith? You believe what God says? Mm -hmm. It's going to come out your mouth. But there's, there's folks, pretenders, hypocrites, They don't believe in their heart. Mm -hmm. They say all the right things. They may say all the Christianese things. But when the rubber hits the road, what's in there is going to come out. That's the tale. That's the telling of it. When troubles come, storms come, and they do come. Jesus said troubles will come in this life. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer. I have overcome. But if you don't believe that, what's going to happen? You're going to reveal what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, why is God doing this? See, if you build your life on a lie, Mm -hmm. On lies, mm -hmm. you believe in lies in your heart, but you're speaking like you you have faith. It's going to collapse. Lies are not stable. Mm -mm. Lies will be exposed. Mm -hmm. And you know who will expose it? The devil. Mm -hmm. Just to humiliate you. Mm -hmm. Just to expose you as a hypocrite and a pretender. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you really believe, don't you? It's not God. Mm -mm. Only good comes down from him. Trouble and calamities, that's the devil's work. That's the thief. Mm -hmm. If y'all don't get anything else from this, know that. Amen. God is good. John 10, 10. He is good. The devil is a bad devil. Mm -hmm. So you better know who you are. I love this. And when the storms come, out of their heart faith, out of their heart faith, it will roar into the storm and defeat it. Ooh. Wow. Now, y'all knew we were going here. This is where it gets good. I mean, it's all been good, hasn't it? Amen. But this is where the confusion ends. Mark 11, and we're going to start in verse 12. Let's go to a tree. Now, another tree incident. <clears throat> and we're going to start with verse 12 and we're going to read through verse 26. Okay. Now, in the first part of chapter 11, I'll just uh, kind of set it up. 
Jesus has just rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, the triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. So this sets this time as Passover. Mm -hmm. So it's the early spring, okay? Now, uh, he, once he gets into uh, Jerusalem, they leave and go to Bethany to spend the night. Now, verse 12. The next day, as he left Bethany, Jesus was feeling hungry. He noticed a leafy fig tree in the distance. Notice that. A leafy fig tree in the distance. So he walked over to see if there was any fruit on it. But there was none. Only leaves. Now my Bible in the, trans, in the Passion says, For it wasn't yet the season for bearing figs. But let me clarify this. And you gardeners will understand this. The fig tree, when you start seeing leaves, the fruit comes. The fruit and the leaves come at the same time. They're little green figs. But they're there with the leaves. So when Jesus looked in the distance and saw a fig tree with leaves on it, it have it's telling him, I've got unripe figs. I do have figs, but they're unripe because it's not the time for ripe figs. It's not the time for bearing figs. You, you follow me? Yep. Jesus knew this. He's the one created the fig tree. He, he wasn't making a mistake like he didn't know. You know, the fig tree was talking to him. The fig tree said, I've got figs on here because the leaves were there. Now notice, Jesus spoke to the, yet uh, there wasn't any figs. So he gets there, all there is is leaves. So he speaks to it. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> many times pe people might read that and say, well, well, why is he talking to the fig tree? How many times have we, ourselves, or we've seen other people speak to objects. You know, your car won't start. You got a flat. You stupid car. You know, and you, you. We talk to things all the time in the negative, don't we? Well, you talk to your plants, and they grow better. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's true. This is key. This is key. He spoke. Isn't that how God brought faith? Brought the, the things he hoped for out of the unseen yeah. realm. He spoke. Now Jesus is speaking to the fig tree. And he says, no one will ever eat fruit from you again. He's saying, you're not going to lie to anybody else. Wow. That's what he's saying. No, nobody's going to eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard him. Yeah. Notice. Pay attention to this. Nothing changed the moment he said that. Nothing changed that they could see. Mm -hmm. They just walked on to the temple. The fig tree looked exactly the same in the natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember that as we get on further into the, the story. Okay, now look, verse 15 I wondered, you know, why, why is this uh, right here in the middle of the story about the fig tree? But it's on purpose. And there, there's a purpose why this is here. Let's read it. This, uh, verse 15. When they came into Jerusalem, Jesus went directly into the temple area and overturned all the tables and benches of the merchants who were doing business there. One by one, he drove them all out of the temple courts, and they scattered away, including the money changers and those selling doves. And he would not allow them to use the temple courts as a thoroughfare for carrying their merchandise and their furniture. Mm. He, he, this is like the cleansing of the temple area. Notice what he does. He begins to teach the people, saying, Does not the scripture say, My house will be a house of prayer for all the world to share? 
Notice that all the world to share. Mm -hmm. All the world to share. There was a special place for non-Jews, for Gentiles, mm -hmm. in God's house. Mm -hmm. See, what Jesus was, uh, was saying here, you've made this a thieves' hangout. But God, He set the Jewish people apart to show the world that there is one true God. Mm -hmm. And it's not about religion. See, all of this was about religion and business. And Jesus was saying, get out of here. This is not the purpose of the temple. Mm -hmm. This is not the purpose of the house of God. It's supposed to be for prayer. We're talking about the confusion between uh, what real faith is. Prayer has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with it. Prayer is communication with God. Jesus was teaching the people in the middle of his lesson on faith. He's saying prayer is spiritual. Prayer is for God. Don't be bringing the natural. Don't be bringing the religious. Don't be bringing the business of the earth into the house of prayer. Mm -hmm. It's about relationship. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's teaching. People just read that like, well, Jesus got mad. No. Yeah. He was trying to teach. He's teaching the, the, the real faith. He's making a, a, a difference between real faith and prayer. That's where the confusion lies. We'll, we'll, we'll break it down. Okay. Now let's learn what real faith is. Verse 20 through 26. In the morning... They passed by the fig tree that Jesus spoke to, and it was completely withered from the roots up. Peter remembered and said to him, Teacher, look, that's the fig tree you cursed. It's now all shriveled up, and it's dead. Notice what Jesus said. Let the faith of God be in you. Whew. See, he, this is all about breaking up the confusion of what real faith is. Notice, I'm telling you, the moment Jesus spoke the day before, the moment he spoke, under the surface, the roots were withering. Nobody could see it. It's under the earth. Mm -hmm. It's in the unseen realm. Mm -hmm. But then it breaks through the unseen realm and it comes up and it all withers until everybody who passes by can see it. But the instant Jesus spoke, it changed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's how real faith works. You don't go by what you see. That's right. Because you speak to the unseen realm. Things have to happen in the unseen realm. But I guarantee you, it's going to break forth into the seen realm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you're going to get the result that you prayed for. Not prayed. Spoke. Yeah. See how ingrained it is? Jesus did not pray, Father Cursed, Cursed his tree. Right. He did not pray. That's right. Amen. Real faith speaks. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Prayer is separate. Yes. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's where the confusion is. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we've got an emergency. Start the prayer chain. Well, if it's something physical, somebody better speak to that body. Somebody better speak to the natural problem that's going on in the earth. Because in the earth you speak. Amen. 
Because you have been given the authority that Jesus took back. Right. All authority has been given to Jesus. And he says, now you go. When he said, now you go, he's saying, I'm giving you authority. Amen. You are my representatives in the earth. Yes. He so. never once said, I'm, I, as you're speaking, he's just showing me. <laughs> when he prayed, he would always go by himself and pray. And it was not prayer like, oh, help these stupid disciples because they're just not getting it. And I don't know what to do. His Come on. intimacy with his father. Yes. Uh, it was yes. just loving on him. He yes. Spending time with him. Yes. And, and being filled back up in his spirit. Yes. And then when he walked the earth, he didn't say, God, please heal this dead boy. He's, I know he's Come dead. Come on. And, you know, I'll do what only you can do, God. No, he just spoke to that he body. He spoke to it. it. <laughs> can I dance? Be convinced 
that you have received it and it will be yours. It will be yours if you're convinced. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how does faith work? You speak. You speak. Now, let's read this once again. And we're going to make it personal. Listen to the truth I speak to you. If someone says, if you say, listen to this truth. If you say, if you say, sickness, get out of this body. If you say, Athens, call me immediately with the best job that you have. Athens, call me right now. But you've got to believe it. Amen. Amen. If you believe, you say, bank account, be filled. That's right. Be overflowing in Jesus' name. Be is a powerful little word. Yes, it is. You speak to whatever situation that you're facing yourself in. What if? That's it. What do you want to happen? What do you believe in your heart? Right. Then speak it. You speak to it. You speak to lack and poverty and say, no, that's under the curse. I've been redeemed from that. Go. Right. In Jesus' name. Right. Abundance, come to me. Come on. I'm a child of the king. I'm royalty. I'm a royal person. There is no lack. There is no poverty in my life. No. That's illegal and I, I say no. Amen. This is how you operate in faith. Because he said, it will be done. Because Jesus said that. He said, it will be done. If you do this, it will be done. Because he said those words. That's why you can be bold. That's why he urges you to be bold. Mm -hmm. Because you believe it will be done. When you speak from a heart of what you believe... It will be done. Yeah. <laughs> so be bold. Yeah. Remember Robbie Dawes in New York City. This, this is proof. This is proof of how bold faith works. Robbie Dawes in New York City. Crowded streets. I, I don't know if it was Christmas time. Anyway, it was crowded. New York's always crowded. Not that I've been there, but I've seen stuff on TV about it. <laughs> but anyway, Robbie Dawes is in, I think the m, m headquarters. And he's standing in front of this big peanut m, m statue. And this woman, this older woman, she, she is frantic. She's just frantic. And he says, well, maybe what's the matter with you? Oh, I've lost my granddaughter. We we were down at, at some store and and now I, I don't know where I don't know where she is. I can't find her. She was a teenager. So Robbie says, Well look, I'm a man of God. We'll pray. What? He said, Do you pray? <laughs> well sometimes. He says, Look, we're we're gonna pray. Now see, this this will show you the difference. He's praying. Because, see, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. He needs to know where that girl is. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit knows where the girl is. Mm -hmm. So he's accessing the Father. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's interceding. Mm -hmm. For this woman didn't know. She didn't have a good position with God. Mm -hmm. He had a good position. He could access the Father mm -hmm. and find out where that girl is, and, act and send angels to go and bring her. And that's what happened. He prayed, 
And he asked God mm -hmm. for somebody, or, no, how did he say that? He said, let that girl hear. No, how did it go? Have that girl meet us here in front of this uh, M&M statue. That's how he said it. Have that girl meet us in front of this M&M uh, statue. And I think he gave a time. You know, yeah, it was very specific. It's very specific. It's very bold. It's very specific in such and such a time. And so it happened. Here this girl was, and the grandmother said, Oh, I found you. What happened? And she said, It's the weirdest thing. I was standing in this other store and I heard this voice. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to go down to the MM headquarters and go uh, go to the uh, the peanut M&M statue. Mm -hmm. Go there now. Wow. She heard. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that was angels. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. See, he accessed God through prayer. Yeah. For spiritual. For something spiritual. And here that girl, she heard an angel and there she came. And oh my goodness, that, that grandmother, I'm going to start praying. <laughs> <laughs> But he was able through to minister the gospel to her. Amen. See? But another, what I believe is he was led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Jesus did everything under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when we step out for God to use us and work with us to help other people, Always be led by the Holy Spirit. He will tell you exactly what you need to say, exactly what you need to do, mm -hmm. and God will get the glory. Mm -hmm. Because you are the glory of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, so that's why we're to be bold, because it will be done. Uh, so let's break it down. There is all manner of prayer. Okay, we're going to talk about prayer and the place it has in our lives. There's songs, psalms, hymns. There's uh, praying in the Spirit. There's decreeing, declaring. There's requests. There's intercessions. There's petitions. That's all manner of prayer. And it has to deal with spiritual things. Okay? You have to discern. Is this, is this situation spiritual? If it's spiritual, then you pray. And if it's spiritual, what I do is I'm going to start off, I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit. Because He knows exactly what to pray. And as you pray in the Spirit... Um, he'll give it. He'll give you understanding, and, and then you'll just go praying in your understanding the correct thing to pray. Okay. So prayer is spiritual. Remember that. You pray and engage God because prayer is communication and interaction with God. But in the earth, you speak, and this is what I saw. With God in prayer, this is prayer. This is engaging God mm -hmm. in prayer, mm -hmm. spiritual. But this, you speak to the earth. Mm -hmm. You speak out in matters that pertain to earth. What pertains to earth? Sickness. You have problems in your body, you speak to your body. You speak to your finances. You speak to the things in the earth. You can speak to the, the elements. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves. See, anything that pertains to the earth, we have dominion. Yes. We have authority. Yes. And it's with the words. That's, that's the example that God gave us. That's how He deals with stuff. So as far as intercession goes, a long time ago, the Lord had me start praying like this. Whenever I would see somebody, we put somebody on my heart, I would just start declaring. 
Like not petitioning, not not you know travailing, just decreeing. I claim them for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. They are yours. Mm -hmm. They will know you. I just start speaking over it, like just things, everything that that he has me seeing, mm -hmm. that everything my heart feels about it is just it is. Yeah. You're, and, and what you're doing is you're calling those things right. that be not as though they are. As yeah. though they are. And what happens, he said, and before we even started this service, he showed me somebody in intercession. And you were talking about that. You were talking about how we're like the bridge. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we're standing here with Jesus. And he gives us eyes to see what he sees in mm -hmm. them. Yes. And they can't see it. Right. But, so when we intercede, when we declare and decree those things, we lay ourselves down as a bridge. Yes. Now, what he said is this. You don't have to pray over and over again. You can, you can decree and you can declare it one time. And then just yeah. rejoice. And then, yeah. But don't let your faith, don't let your eyes start seeing what's in the natural. Mm -hmm. Right. When you, when you declare them for the kingdom and they go out and do something like even more demonic than they normally do. And go, oh, it didn't work. Right. He said, keep your keep your eyes on your eyes of faith. Because yeah. what the only thing holding that bridge up is what you believe in your heart is going exactly. to happen with that person. Yeah. If your if your eyes shift, if your faith changes, if you become double minded, that bridge tears down. Exactly. But you don't have to just you don't have to wail for months and years about right. so and so coming into the kingdom. You just you just lay that faith out there, and every yeah. time my 15 year old acts like a turd, yeah. I just remember he's going to be a great man of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I just decree and declare that yep. he is, he's on fire for God, and he's going to be yep. a passionate yeah. man. Yeah, because he's gonna in be, the unseen realm, that's it. Things is happening. I, in the unseen realm, <laughs> since the time he was born, I claimed him for God. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's all there is to it. And, so, and it's going to break forth one really, day. Holy Spirit will sing to me, Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> you can't hide. Yeah. And and I just what I see, I see a little boy playing hide and seek with God, but God's going to put his foot down and stand in front of him one day. Yep. He won't be able to run. That's it. That's it. Amen. Praise God. So do y'all see that uh, prayer yeah. is spiritual? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is where most folks get confused because we do have the prayer chains. And I'm not bashing prayer chains. Right. I'm just saying when you get a prayer call, pray correctly. You know, if, it, if it's something to do with the earth, speak to it. Amen. If it's something spiritual, talk to God about it. And the problem I have is so much of that is rooted in fear. It's never like, it's like, oh... The worse it is, the more people need to pray. Yeah. And it's yeah. just so fear and the more people we need to get It's to not, know. let me call the few people that I know will pray. Right. It's not, okay, this is what we're up against and this is how I need you to pray. It's, get everybody to pray. Get right. the people in China to pray. And what you're saying to the enemy is, I am scared mm -hmm. out of my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's working. Yeah. Whatever you're doing is working. Yeah. Is what you're telling the enemy. Exactly. I can't, I can't find my head from a hole in the ground right now. Exactly. And, and see, and that that's what we talked about Friday night. That people people fall into that and it's wrong. It it, it produces no result. No. It brings no answer. No. Because it's full of double mindedness and doubt and unbelief. And you'll not get anything from God. It actually with that. Is the unbelief because then people feel like they did something. Yeah. But look, all these people prayed and nothing happened. Yeah, and it brings confusion. Yeah. It brings confusion. Well, we prayed and we prayed. No, you hoped. Mm -hmm. If you if you go to the truth, the Bible is clear. The yeah. proof, the proof that you're in faith, the mountain moves. Mm -hmm. If that mountain don't move, you're in high hope. You're stuck up in your head. Or worse, you're just in total unbelief. Right. But true faith, real faith, will move that mountain. Right. You will see it move. You will see it move. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so, let's give some examples, and then we're fixing to wrap it up. 
So we're called to pray for our government. Now, why are we to, because governments are in the earth, why are we to pray for our governments if they're in the earth? Well, because we're instructed and told, pray for your government and pray for your leaders. Because it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual matter. Why is it spiritual? Because the Bible says all governments are established by God. Mm -hmm. He establishes all of them. So we have to trust Him. And so we go to Him in intercession and we talk to Him about the governments and the nations in the earth. We talk about uh, what's something else? Uh, people. Mm -hmm. We intercede and pray we talk to God about people not to override their will. Right. We're not into witchcraft. That's right. But like Jennifer said, we pray what God says about them. That's, right. that's how that's why we pray. Because people are in the earth. Let's don't get confused. We pray to God about spiritual things. But we speak in the earth to things that you that can change in the natural. Amen. Because we know what his word says. Mm -hmm. We know that sickness is not from God. We know that lack and poverty is a curse and we've been redeemed from the curse. Right. We know that uh, we are loved. We are in his image. And so we know how to treat people in love. Mm -hmm. It takes obedience. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you speak to those situations. What you believe in your heart. Amen? Amen. Uh, okay, well I'm going to wrap it up with these two statements. And, and I've said it again and again, but I'm going to say it again. Spiritual matters require all manner of prayer. Spiritual matters. But earthly matters requires releasing your faith through your words from what you believe in your heart. Amen. And, and let, me just, let me just clarify this. It's a journey. Yeah. Do not let condemnation attach itself to you if you thought you were really believing yeah. and it didn't happen. Yeah. All right. Because we're all growing into the image of Christ. It's a journey. Right. And don't quit praying. Don't quit speaking. Like I can see. Cause it yeah. Because it grows. And just just keep on keeping on. Well, it's like the like the man with the son. He said, help my own belief. Yeah. And so that's a spiritual thing. Exactly. Where when you feel like I don't have the faith for that. You just talk to God about it. You talk to him. Exactly. Yeah. Of faith. That, you know, help my own belief. Yeah. Help me to get in here. Exactly. And that's in your secret place. Yeah. Because there, there are, there are situations that come through your eye gate or your ear gate that are just above your faith level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fasting and prayer will increase your faith level, as well as getting into the Word. But fasting and prayer will discipline your flesh and it will uh, help you hear you. I mean, that's what Jesus said to the disciples. Why couldn't we do this? The disciples asked him, why couldn't we cast out the boys, the devil? Because of your unbelief. And it's fasting and prayer. It's not because that's a bad devil. Right. All devils, whether they're good, they're, you know, how, no matter how bad or strong or powerful, they're all defeated. That's right. They're all defeated. So it's not about that. It's about hearing. Hearing from God and, and, and getting to that place where you can believe. Amen. You know, it must have been a, a really horrific sight yeah. 
Yeah. You know, worse than what they've seen before. The, the demonic manifestation was just scary. I always imagined that he was seizing. Yeah. And it was getting worse. Worse and, and worse. Right? And they're, and they're yeah. to the point where he's like, you know, really making noises and just being violent. Yeah. And, and they couldn't. They couldn't get past that. They couldn't unsee with their eyes what they were seeing. And so their, their, their vision, God's always kind of like talking to me about where your eyes are yeah. seeing that single eye. Yeah. Like their eye came off of what was in their heart and their face and their eye went to what they were seeing. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just getting worse. What are we doing wrong? Yeah. You know? what are, yeah. 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 So, so don't let condemnation get you. Just just keep keep going at it with all you are. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope y'all got some out of that. Uh, are there any prayers?